Hey guys and girls, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you how to make an Rcraft server so you can finally play Rcraft with your friends online, completely free, from your computer. Let's get started. Step number one is to make a folder. Of course, we're going to make a folder for this Rcraft server because we need a folder to save the server on. So let's go ahead and name this Rcraft server <laughs> tutorial. Okay, let's make it longer. There we go. Go ahead and click on that first link in the description, which will bring you to the website to download Rcraft servers. Once you click on the first link in the description, you'll be presented with this website unless it has been updated of course but this website has been around for very very long and it hasn't changed so i'm assuming it is still the same in here we have our craft and we have all the files to download our craft the mod pack and the server pack which is what we need right so we're going to click on files and we're going to scroll down a little bit until we find additional files as you can see our craft server pack 1.12.2 release v.9 i mean 2.9.1 jesus i forget my english sometimes anyways this is the server for 2.9.1 if you want to make a server for an older version of of Rcraft, let's say that you prefer playing the 2.8 version, go ahead and click on view all. This is going to bring you over here to all files. We're going to scroll down a little bit. And as you can see, we have all the server packs, right? We have 2.9.1, 2.9, 2.8.2, 2.8.1, and a lot of other versions in case you want to play the older versions of Rcraft. But I'm assuming you're looking for a server for 2.9.1, which is the newest version of Rcraft. Let's go ahead and click on download. You could download it from view all and find the one that you want, or you could just download it here from the top. Rcraft server pack 1.2. 12.2 release 2.9.1 let's go ahead and click on download and when we click on download that is going to redirect us over here where we're not going to click anything we're going to let it load we need this to fully load and there we go as we can see it has fully loaded let's just wait for that to download the download should start immediately in the bottom left if you have chrome if you're using opera gx the download might start on the top right because i have done it through opera gx and that's where it starts anyways once we have the server pack guess what we're going to minimize this window we're going to drop the server pack i recommend you drop it to the desktop if you feel safer dropping it anywhere else go ahead and do it but i'm going to put it on the desktop now in order to open this file we need a zip file reader i recommend you use winrar because winrar is completely free so let's go ahead and download winrar go ahead and click on that second link in the description which will bring you over here to download winrar go ahead and click on download winrar it's right here this blue button right there and that is going to immediately start the download for winrar as we can see here on the bottom left and once it has loaded we could go ahead and click on it that is going to bring up this window we could go ahead and close the browser for now and we're going to click install to install winrar and be able to read the zip file go ahead and click ok and now you're done and you're able to double click this and open the file this will always come up because you have the free version don't worry just close this and as we can see we have all the files in here what we're going to do is open our rcraft server folder that we have made remember i made this folder right we made a folder downloaded the rcraft server files and we're going to drop all the files in here using winrar or if you prefer to unzip just right click and click extract here but anyways i'm just going to drop all of it because that's easier for me go ahead and drop that into the folder that we had creator earlier and let's just wait for that to load we can now close the winner and we could even delete it it's fine just go ahead and delete it now in order to make the server run in order to start the server right because now we have the files but we don't have the server installed right what we need to do is install forge so we're going to download forge 1.12.2 you guessed it click on the third link in the description and after you click on that third link you'll be presented with this website i already selected 1.12.2 for you but in case when you come over here it's a different version go ahead and find 1.12 here on the left and once you click on it you should be able to find 1.12.2 and we're going to click here on installer let's go ahead and download that that is going to bring you over here where you're not going to click anything you're going to wait five seconds okay do not click anything don't download a virus be careful just wait for this button here on the top right to say skip and go ahead and click on it and that is going to immediately start the download of forge 1.12.2 which you guessed it we're going to drop into the folder actually we're not going to drop it into the desktop i know sometimes i say we need to drop it into the desktop we're not we're going to drop it into the folder of the server there we go we have the installer right here and we could go ahead and close this website now in order to run forge 1.12.2 you need java 8 there's a chance that you have a newer version of java you probably have java 17th or java 18th in order to play the forge 1.12.2 or any modded version of the older minecraft we need to install java 8 how do you install java 8 don't worry i got you go ahead and click on the fourth link in the description and that fourth link in the description will bring you over here to this website where we're going to scroll down a little bit until we see windows offline 64 bit make sure you download the 64 bit because that is the only way you're going to be able to add more 
more gigabytes to the server. If you don't download the 64 bit, you might be stuck adding two gigabytes or the server might not even start. So let's go ahead and click on that link right here, window offline 64 bit, and that should immediately start the download on the bottom left, as we can see right here. And we're going to drop this into the desktop, okay? This file, we're going to drop it into the desktop, not into the folder. Let's go ahead and drop it. We don't want to mix up the Java installer with the Forge version. I know you might get confused because they have the same icon, but this one is a Java installer. Let's go ahead and click on it. Let's go ahead and start the installation for Java. This is what the Java installation should look like. As you can see, Java setup, welcome. We could go ahead and close the website on the background. Your installer might even look different than mine because I already have Java 18 installed. So what I'm going to do is click install. Let's go ahead and wait for this to install. Now that Java 8 has successfully installed, we need to get rid of the older version of Java. First of all, we could delete the installer, right? Let's go ahead and delete Java 8 installer because we don't need it for now. If you want to save it for later on, that's up to you. Anyways, let's get rid of Java 18 because we're going to need to do that in order for this to run properly. Go ahead and open your search bar and type add or remove programs. And we're going to open this file right here or Windows or whatever it's called. Just go ahead and open it. And in the search list, we're going to type Java. And as you can see, I get two different ones. I have Java 8 and I have Java 18. I'm going to get rid of Java 18 for now. Let's go ahead and install it. Click on install. Now, listen, here's the thing. You're going to need Java 18 if you're going to play modern Minecraft newer than 1.16, right? If you're playing a modern Minecraft that is newer than 1.16, you're going to need Java 18. If you're playing any version before that, you're going to need Java 8. I know it sucks, but they are not compatible with each other. So yes, you guessed it. You're going to have to be installing and uninstalling Java's depending on the mod pack that you want to play. For example, when I want to play medieval Minecraft or I want to play better Minecraft, I have to install Java 18. And when I want to play our craft, I have to install Java 8. It sucks, but it is the way it is. I mean, most likely for you, you're going to have a favorite mod pack that you're going to play all the time. So you shouldn't even have this problem. Anyways, once and only once we have Java 8 by itself installed, we could go ahead and close this and we're going to open the folder with the server pack. As you can see, all the files are here. We're going to right click and we're going to create a new text document, right? Go ahead and create a new text document. And of course, go ahead and open it. Now in here, in this text document, you're going to go to the description of this video and you're going to find this string right here. Four gigabyte server, Java, dot, 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 all of this information, right? I'm going to leave that on the description. You should see that right below all the links. You should be able to see all this string of text right here. And you're going to copy and paste it and make sure that it ends after pause. Make sure there's no space or anything, just the E and no more spaces. Now, once we have the text with the string in there, we're going to minimize this. We don't need it for now do not close it okay do not close it just click on minimize and go ahead and click on forge remember we already installed java 8 we're ready to install forge let's go ahead and install it real quick so once you click on forge instead of installing the client make sure you click on install server click on these three little dots right here and you guessed it we're going to find the folder that we had created mine is on the desktop and it's called our craft server tutorial as you can see this is the folder we're going to click open and we're going to click ok and we're just going to let it install just let it run let it install there we go successfully downloaded pretty fast for me it might be longer for you just give it some time and we're going to click ok now remember i told you to minimize that notepad we're going to launch it back up and in here we're going to find the file that forge installation created as you can see it created a minecraft server and it created a forge 1.12.2 we're not going to copy the minecraft server and you could even get rid of the installer so you don't get confused go ahead and get rid of the installer and now we only have the forge 1.12.2 and the minecraft server do not select the minecraft server only select the forge very important that you pay attention in here go ahead and copy the name of that file just copy Control C, copy the whole name. We're going to launch the notepad and where it says change name, we're going to add the name. It should look something similar to this. It might be different in some numbers, but it should be very, very similar. The forge file dot jar, right? It should look just like that or very similar. Make sure that you don't have it looking like this because it might look something like that. Get rid of the last jar. It needs to be just one. As we can see, just like that, we're going to start a four gigabyte server. I mean, if you want to start three gigabytes in case that your computer doesn't have that much RAM, all you have to do is lower these numbers in here to a three this one right here as well and that would have started three gigabyte server but anyways in my case i'm going to start a four gigabyte server let's go ahead and click on save and we're going to click on save as we're not going to save it as a normal file we're not going to close it and save we're going to click save as and before we type a name we're going to make sure that we save it as all files do not save it as a text document save it as all files and type the following type start dot bat start that bad file right it should read something like that start dot bat i'm going to go ahead and leave that somewhere in the description as well just in case you forget start that bad file go ahead and click on save and now we could close this and now we should have a file named start that bad file as you can see right here and that is the file that is going to start your server by stop 
do not start it. Why? Because you want to make sure that your server is online before you start it. How do you make sure your server is online? Go ahead and right click on server properties and click on edit with notepad. You most likely have regular notepad. I have notepad plus plus. Go ahead and click on that. And that is going to bring this app in here with a lot of information. The only thing that we need is a string called server IP. As you can see, server IP is right here. And in there, we're going to put our local IP. I'm doing all of this before I launch the server because I know it might take longer once the server has been created. So I'm going to do it beforehand. Now to find your local IP, we're going to go to search and we're going to type command prompt. Let's just type command prompt and we're going to open this thing here called command prompt. Let's wait for that to load. And in here, we're going to type the following. We're going to type IP config. As you can see, IP config, go ahead and press enter. And that is going to bring up a lot of information. The only thing that you're looking for in here is the thing called IPv4 address, right? And you're going to look for these numbers. You only need the numbers. You don't need anything else. You don't need letters, just numbers. Go ahead and select the numbers. For you, it might be different than mine. Maybe some of you have the same numbers. It all depends. Go ahead and copy that, select it and press control C. Control C, we could close command prompt for now and go back to server IP and paste it in there. As you can see, now our server is online, at least for our computer. Go ahead and save this. If you're using Notepad, just close it and click yes on save. And now we could finally click a start and let's go ahead and do that. And that is going to start launching at the server. But, but here's the thing in the middle of the installation, it will stop. It will stop and it will say, press any key to continue. And once you do press any key, it's gonna close as you can see. And that is because we need to accept the ULA file that was just created. As you can see, there's a text document named ULA. Go ahead and open that up. It should look like this. And we're going to change this thing that says false to true. Go ahead and type T-R-U-E, true. Go ahead and click file, save, close it. And now go ahead and run that server one more time and just let it run. You have made an Craft server. You have a working 2.9.1 Craft server. Let's just wait for it to load until it says done. And once it says done, that's it. Your server has been created. We already added our local IP. So the server is already ready to be launched for the public. Now, in order for our friends to join our server, we need to make sure we port forward. Port forwarding is a very, very long process. So for you luck, I made a video on how to port forward and I'm going to link it on one of the corners right now so you could go ahead and watch that video and learn how to port forward a server as you can see it says preparing a spawn area I don't know if you can see it there we go that is it it has is it has loaded let's go ahead and type list and as you can see there are zero players out of 20 because the server is completely on in order for you to join the server just open our craft go to the right connect and type local host or you could also type your IPv4 address the one that we pasted into the settings earlier that is the way you're going to join your own server and if you want your friends to join you need to port forward the server and I made a video on how to port forward Forward. Go ahead and click on that video and you'll learn to pull forward. If you want to join, just go direct connect, local host, or your local IP address, and you should be able to connect. And that is it for today, guys. I hope I was able to help you make an R craft server and you're finally able to play with your friends. If this video was helpful, you could leave me a comment or you could even thank me through the super thanks by donating some money. That is not necessary, but it's greatly appreciated to keep the channel going. Anyways, as always, bye bye.